Hey folks, sorry I'm not in school today, uh, but I wanted to make sure to set you guys up for a lot of success and not missing really an opportunity to learn some new stuff and some practice some skills that we have. So I've created this little video that hopefully you're all watching while the sub's here to kind of keep you going in the right direction and practicing some of the skills that we worked on last time. So if we look really quick at our agenda, um, we're still going to be working on identifying and interpreting key features of the graphs. We took some notes on that last class. We identified what key features were. And we're really going to work on being able to interpret those well today, okay? In our sit begin, hopefully you got one of these little sheets from the sub. If you look closely there, we have a mapping, and it asks you some questions about a relation and domain and range. And if any of those words are not familiar to you, that's kind of okay, but you have a resource that can hook you up. You have a triple entry journal. Remember last week when we did vocab? Okay, all of these words are listed on that sheet. So if you need to, go back and look at it, okay? Always, always, always use your notes, especially if I'm not available to kind of give you that guidance. So we're gonna go over this together right now. Then I'm gonna kind of outline our next activity, which is going to be going over your homework. To go over it, we're gonna do what we call a think, pair, share. Then you'll pause the video, do that activity, come back to this big screen here, and we're gonna talk about the last thing you're gonna be accomplishing today while I'm not here in partners you're going to be looking at six graphs on that sideboard. They're on green paper. And you're going to be identifying their key features and then outlining a rough idea of what the stories for each of those graphs would look like. How can we do some analytical writing with that? Um, and it's going to be important that with your partner you really look at what are those key features and how are they related to our two variables because you're going to choose one of those stories, any one you want. It can be the lawnmower one, the bungee jumping one. You'll see when you start looking at those graphs. Um, you're going to pick the one that makes, again, the most sense to you. That's going to be the easiest for you to write about. And you're going to really write a nice, beefy paragraph for me. Now, you don't have math until sometime next week, either Tuesday or Wednesday. So you have a whole weekend to write a paragraph that's going to be based on these six key features we'll briefly review. And you've already kind of started pre-thinking about it with a partner in class. You and your partner are writing separate stories. It is not, this homework is not a partner activity. But the brainstorming piece, I kind of want you to be able to bounce some ideas off of each other if you'd like to, okay? And we'll, again, we'll talk about that after we go over the homework. We'll pause the video, play the video. It's going to be amazing. You're going to miss nothing even though I'm not at school. You're going to be owning it all and killing it today. So let's start by going over our sit and begin. So I'm sure you've read this whole problem. It is about, who is, I don't even know, Margaret, and she has collected data about how many textbooks students take home. X's represent the amount of books that they're taking home every night. And the Y represents how many students are taking home those books. Now remember, this is called a mapping, okay? And a mapping shows you a relationship between your domain, which is your X values, and your range, which is your Y values. And each of these arrows, Hopefully, you already could finish my sentence. Each of these arrows represents a separate coordinate pair. It shows you which x's are matched with which y's. So, for example, if I look at the zero here, that means zero textbooks were taken home, if I follow the arrow, by 12 students. So 12 kids didn't take home any books. Okay. And then so on and so forth with the rest of the arrows. So let's take a look at our first question, okay? Besides like being able to read the mapping, we need to be able to determine some items from this mapping. So the first question says, express this relation as a set, set is a key thing that should be thinking, oh, curly brackets, a set of ordered pairs, okay? And ordered pairs are the same thing as coordinate pairs. So if it's a set, again, it's gonna be in curly brackets. And I'm gonna now write coordinate pairs for every single pair represented here. Now again, the, the combination of x's and y's are shown with the arrow. So if this 0 goes with the 12, the x value in my coordinate pair would be 0, my y is the 12. Then I'm going to look at my next coordinate pair. I've taken care of the to express, express a relation as a set, curly brackets, of coordinate pairs, 
I just put all my coordinate pairs in curly brackets. Each one is separated by a comma. Next, it says, what is the domain of the relation? And again, domain relates to our x values. When we record the domain of anything that is just points, okay, we're going to look at all of our x's, and we're going to list them in order from least to greatest with no repeats. And I'm hoping you kind of had all those words in your head already. So to write it out in its fancy way, I'm going to start by writing the word domain colon, curly bracket, and again, all the values of x that are least to greatest with no repeats. They're already in order for me, which is awesome, and there's no repeats here, so I'm just going to list them separated by commas. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Oops, no parentheses there. Instead, when I'm done with my set, I should be putting a curly bracket. Next, they say range. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put range, colon, curly bracket. Now I'm going to list all of my y's from least to greatest with no repeats, okay? Now my y values here, if I look at my coordinate pairs for my second number, I notice that 11 happens twice. However, when I write it down here, I'm only going to write the number 11 once, okay? In our mapping, if we looked at this to determine our range, we can look at our y's. They're already listed from least to greatest. And even though there's two arrows pointing at the 11, I'm only going to write it in my range once. So my range will be 8, 10, 11, 12, 23, and So that's just a nice little quick review of domain, range, and how to write a relation as a set of ordered pairs. Okay? These are important definitions for you. One of our standards is focused around determining whether things are or are not functions, and how the heck do we write domain and range. And that's pretty easy. If you remember, what the heck is domain? Oh, it's our x's. And you remember how we write it fancy style, least to greatest, no repeats, okay? So this, I don't need it. I'm not collecting it. I would put it somewhere safe in your binder, though, because you may want to use it to study at some point, okay? Now, if you haven't already, pull out your homework. You can keep the video running. I just want to talk to you about your next activity, and then I'm going to have you pause it, do the activity for about 10 minutes or so, share out. And then we'll move on to the last piece, which is previewing those green stories again on the board. So on your homework, you had to write some little stories, right, based off of the first time that I told you the six key features. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to think. You're going to reread your own stories, and you're going to pick one that you feel like was the most specific, so it sounded the best math-wise, and that used the vocabulary the best. Hopefully you're like, vocabulary, what? Oh yeah, the six key features that I'm supposed to know. The six key features, and normally I'd, I'd have you tell me this, but you're not here to tell me it, are going to be your minimum on your graph, the lowest point, okay? Your maximum on your graph, the highest point. You should be looking for an increasing interval, increasing interval, and decreasing interval. You need to include both of those, okay? When is my graph, when I read it left to right, looking like it's going up? When is my graph, when I read it left to right, looking like it's going down? Okay, what does that mean in context of going to the supermarket? What does that mean in context of the value of a baseball card? I don't know, okay? But remember, as you mention these in your paragraph, you need to be tying it to what the heck the graph is about, okay? If it's about driving and you're measuring speed, then it's tied to speed. If it's about driving and you're measuring time, then you need to talk about how long it took to get somewhere, okay? Read those two labels on your axes just a little bit more carefully. Now, those are only four of our six key features. The other two key features that you're going to be looking at are our x-intercept, not x-axis, x-intercept, which is where our graph hits the x-axis, and our y-intercept which is where our graph is going to hit our y-axis, okay? Remember, y is our vertical axis. So, read over your two stories. I would maybe encourage you to underline these six terms so you know you included them all. If you didn't include them, take a breath. This is the first time you've been writing stories, and know that from this point forward, you need to include them all, okay? So, after you've determined which of your two stories you like the best, 
you're going to pair up with someone else, okay? I don't mind who you pair up with. If you have to get in a group of three because there's an odd number of kids in your class, go for it, okay? Take the initiative and ask someone to be your partner. And what you're going to do is you're going to read their best story. You're not going to read yours to them. You're going to take their paper, so it's a little less awkward, and they're going to say read the second one, and you're going to read it. Then you're going to tell that person what your favorite part of their story was, and then they'll tell you what their favorite part of your story was. So you're, you know, got some nice little warm fuzzies going on there. You each get a compliment. I want to make sure that all six terms are being used. So maybe you say to them, you know, I noticed you didn't talk about your x-intercept. Let's look at the graph. Oh, there is an x-intercept. What does that mean? What sentence could we have written for that? Okay. So I want you to have some good discussions, but definitely share some compliments with each other. Okay. And they should be math related, not like I really thought it was funny when blah, 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 blah. Okay. I want you to give some good math feedback. After that, you two are going to get together and you're going to decide which of those two stories, either yours or theirs, you think is the best representation of a math paragraph that sounds awesome. And you're going to share that story with the entire class. Okay. So when I ask you to pause this video, you're going to take maybe two or three quiet minutes, read over your story. Okay. Both of your stories. Then you're going to, after about two or three minutes, hop up, go to someone else in the room, say, Hey, you want to be my partner? Flip flop stories. Okay. Read the other person's, give them some good feedback about things you liked about their stories, and then determine which one you're going to share out with the class. I want every partner pair to share out at least one story. Okay. So this whole activity should probably take, I'd say if two minutes on your own to read, maybe two or three minutes with your partner. So that's five, maybe six minutes there. And then if each group shares out, I'm saying this whole thing, even after sharing should take about 10 to 12 minutes. Okay. So right now pause that video and you guys can get started. Hey folks, welcome back. Hopefully at this point you had a great think pair share. You heard some great examples that other people wrote from their homework stories. Maybe there was not one story that was really good the whole thing through, but you're like, oh, I really like how they talked about their increasing interval or wow, their Y intercept really made sense with the graph. So take the pieces of each story that were really, really good and try to expand on those now in your own writing. Okay. So on the sideboard are all these fun little graphs, okay? And you should get one of these sheets from your wonderful substitute teacher, okay? Now this sheet shows that there's six different graphs. On the side here, it tells you the content. Track team, bungee jump, lawn mowers, um, online store, baseball card, and car ride. And then at the bottom is a rubric because what you're working on, folks, this writing and this identifying and interpreting key features is actually one of your math standards in chapter one. So there are five on the sideboard. There are six boxes. We're going to do one box together so you know exactly what I'm expecting for you to do while you're in class today. And then we'll talk about a little bit about what your homework should look like also. Okay? So we're going to do the one that says car ride. Okay? So it's not on the front. It's actually the last box right above the rubric. Okay? So flip your sheet over. Go to this. You should see this double box system going on there and this little graph is not on the sideboard so you're going to want to take a look right here okay so let's get going first things first you should identify where the heck any of your key features are and if one of these does not exist you want to point that out but you still need to include it in your paragraph and we'll talk a little bit about what that is okay or what that would mean because one of these key features does not exist here and you'll see how we're still going to write about it, even though it wouldn't be part of our story. So if I look here, I notice this is about a car ride. I'm measuring how long the car ride is. That's time. And then not how fast the car is going, but the distance that the car has traveled. Okay. So how far away they go each time. I'm going to start off by identifying where these six items are. So my X intercept and my Y intercept on this graph, okay, actually happen at the same spot. So remember, x-intercept is where it hits the x-axis. It hits right here. And the y-intercept happens where the line hits the y-axis. Oh, snap, it happens right here. So my x-intercept happens when x, in this instance, is 0, right? It's right at the beginning. 
and the y-intercept happens in this instance again where y equals zero. Now, is there numbers here to tell me zero? No, but I know it's at the very bottom. If I was looking at another one of these, so if I look at the sideboard, I see there's one that says bungee jump, its y-intercept is way up here. I don't have to say y-intercept equals 50. I just need to identify that the y-intercept happens up higher, and it might mean something, okay? So if the x-intercept is at zero, it happens at the beginning, that means that my x, my time, is zero. So maybe I don't even want to put x equals zero. Maybe I want to say my time is starting. So my time starts. Now my y is my distance. My distance starts also at zero. So instead of y equals zero, maybe I should put my distance traveled is zero. So I've gone zero miles when zero time passes. That makes sense. If I'm starting at home, I haven't gone anywhere yet. Right when I get in my car, right? I gotta turn it on, fire it up, and get going. So that's, I'm kind of already imagining how it's going to tie into my story a little bit. Next, I have to look at intervals where my function is increasing. And I notice it happens at the beginning, and it happens here, and it happens here. So there's three increasing intervals. Okay? So three times that this is going up. And I'm going to take a second, I'm going to think about that. Every time this graph is going up, Time is passing, and the distance is increasing. So time is going, distance is increasing. Oh, you know what that means? That means I'm driving. And I'm not driving back home. If it's going up, my distance is increasing. I'm driving away from my home. Okay. Next, I'm going to look here. Is there any intervals in this graph where it looks like my line's going down? Hopefully you're like, no, Mrs. Light. It's not. Duh. Okay? There's no decreasing intervals here. There are none. Now, in my paragraph, I'm still going to have to say what that means. So, again, I'm thinking time. I'm thinking distance. There is no time where my distance is going down. If my distance was going down, though, I would be heading closer to my house. So, because there's no decreasing interval, that means there's no time when I am headed back home. Okay, and again, that means that my distance is decreasing. So that's a little note to myself. In my paragraph, I'm going to say that. I might even end my paragraph by saying, in my car trip, I never headed home, which is why there is no decreasing interval. That might be something I type right in there, okay? Next, I'm going to look at maximum. Maximum is the highest point on my graph right here. That's my max, okay? So my maximum is at the end. Again, this part's just little notes. Okay, maybe that's when I get to where I'm going. And then my minimum, if I look, it's going to be the lowest point on my graph. For me, my lowest point is here in the beginning. My minimum is when I'm at home. And it's at the beginning. So these notes are going to help me now if I wanted to write a nice paragraph. Now, I am not asking you to, at this moment, write the paragraph. With you and your partner, I want you to hit up all five, if you have time, okay, all five of these graphs, and I want you to write these types of thoughtful notes. That way, if you decide, you know what, this car ride, this made a lot of sense to me. I'm going to write my paragraph based on this. When you go home tonight, you can look at these notes and do that. Maybe this car ride one, well, I'm letting you know right now, no one can do this car ride one because I did all of the identifying, and I want you to identify on your own. So maybe you decide the lawnmower sales makes the most sense to you, okay? And it has all of the key features, so you're like, yeah, I want to talk about that one, okay? So... You go home, you're going to look at these, you're going to log into your laptop, open up a Google Doc, don't care what you call it right now, we'll talk about that next week, and you're going to start typing like mad your six key features in your story, okay? So again, this part of your paper, not necessarily the paragraph, this part is what you need to focus on getting done in class. If you have time and you and your partner finish all five of those on the sideboard, then I want you to go back to your seat individually I want you to read over all your notes and decide which graph you like the best. Let's say
say you decided you like the lawnmower one, like I said the best, but you're nervous because you don't have a picture that you're not going to be able to remember and write a great story for it. Like, here, this is some flat stuff. I have to make sure I mention that in my story. Then feel free, grab your phone, take a picture of it, okay, before you leave the room. You shouldn't be browsing your Snapchat or your Insta, okay? Just take a quick picture of the graph you like. Or I am going to put links to all of this paperwork and the graphs on my homework page, so you should be able to access it there. So let's just talk very, very quickly. I'm just going to verbalize it. I'm not going to write it. What the story could be for this. So I'm going to give you an example of what a really decent Okay, because I'm doing it off the top of my head. A decent story would sound like that includes all six of these key features and is about our extended car ride somewhere. Ooh, I don't like that. We're going to start that story over. All right. Take two. Mrs. White and her family are going to go up to Machias to go snowmobiling. They pack up their car, and before they leave, they are at their minimum distance because they're still at their house period. This minimum distance is also the x-intercept and the y-intercept because time is just starting to pass on their trip and they've gone nowhere. So their distance is zero, period. See how that included both of these and it said what each one means, okay? It's important to tie both of those together. So we'll go back to my paragraph. So they start driving and they drive for a while and then Mrs. White looks down and says, oh my goodness, we are almost out of gas. So they pull over, okay, so the distance is staying the same, and they get gas. It takes some time for them to get gas because there's a line and those pumps up north are old school. So you have to wait for them. Then they hop back in the car, they go on the highway, and they are going at an increasing interval because their distance is increasing as time progresses, okay? They're going further away from home. Then it's around dinner time, so they stop again and they find a Denny's up north because who doesn't like Denny's? And they stop and have dinner for an hour or so. At that point, they're pretty close to Machias. So they hop back in their car and continue. They get to the hotel, which is the maximum distance they are from home, and they're done with their trip. During this trip, there is no decreasing interval because they never turned around and went home, period. Now, to earn the four for this, I have to add something that could have happened that would have changed the graph. So my example for this would be, if Mrs. White had forgotten her cell phone at home, perhaps they would have had a decreasing interval here before having an increasing one, because she would have gone back to get it, period. See how I kind of tied in this outside situation and how it could have affected the graph. Again, you can't do a car ride for yours, and I'm sure you're a much more interesting writer than I am. But make sure, although I want your writing to be somewhat interesting, I want it to include all of our six key features and describe what they look like in the graph. Okay? I did mention these flat spots. It's important to mention those. That's part of my story, even though the word constant is not maybe one of my key terms that I need to include. Okay? So make sure you're doing the story and including all features with what they mean. I'm going to stop talking now. I want you to get together with your partner, write out those five things, and you should be good to go, okay? Again, typed out paragraph. Don't share it with me yet. Just in Google Docs for when we get together next week. Thank you, folks. I will catch you later. Bye.